Good morning. I'm going to continue on here with the fifth reading of the Boomer Blues. Vincent. Worried about his mother, Vincent phoned Grace to give her a heads up that Mary was showing signs of depression and that she had made an appointment with Dr. Klein. He also wanted her to let Jane and Lucy know about this. Concerned, Grace mentioned that she had noticed that all three women were feeling the blues, but Mary was more emotional than the other two. Understanding how protective Vince was of his mother, Grace promised to keep an eye on her. His devotion to her after his father's passing had been a blessing. Grace admired his steadfast compassion and love. Mary wasn't the only one who missed George. Vince had shared a close relationship with his father. During the summers when he was a youngster, he and his dad had often driven to Yosemite to spend the weekend together in the forest. They had camped out, hiked, enjoyed nature, and bonded during these trips. The excursions had become an annual father-son tradition. Vince missed spending one-on-one -on -one time with his dad. He often recalled their long talks around the campfire and the many times they had backpacked along Yosemite Creek, their favorite hiking trail. He remembered a heart-to-heart -heart talk he once had with his father as a young adult regarding the mixed feelings he had had for his girlfriend, Fran. He felt out of touch with his emotions because he desperately wanted to make something of himself before making a love commitment. Every time he and Fran got too close, he put the brakes on. It seemed more than a crush, more than a friendship, but he was too scared to call it love. He recalled George saying, Love is elusive and a bit unpredictable, but I got lucky the day I met your mother. Don't analyze it. Love has a way of sneaking up on you. It's best to go with the flow. If it's love, you'll know. One of the saddest days in Vincent's life was the day his father was killed. It was tragic on so many levels. He lost not only his father, but his confidant and best friend. Like his father, Vince had worked hard to achieve a law degree. He sometimes regretted not telling Fran long ago that he loved her, but he hadn't wanted to rush things back then. He should have expressed his feelings. Things would have been different. She wouldn't have moved to Los Angeles to study environmental law, and he wouldn't have worked so hard to take over his father's practice. Regardless of the what-ifs, down deep inside he knew that when something is meant to be, nothing can stop it from becoming a reality. Without love, life seemed empty, so he managed to stay busy helping others as much as he could. That seemed to fill the void, but he was anxious for something more. Lucy Lucy's walk home from yesteryears was a bit longer than Mary's. She lived on the corner of 45th Avenue and Sill Rock Drive. The house was across the street from the VA Medical Center, Fred's home away from home. When she arrived, she noticed Fred's purple 1966 VW van parked in the driveway. He had purchased it shortly before he was drafted into the Army in September of 1968. Being an auto mechanic, he kept it in tip-top shape. His pride and joy was now a rare classic. It had been on display at the annual classic car show in Alameda every year for the last two decades. Fred loved it and babied it more than he did his shiny new Harley. Lucy loved it too and was happy whenever Fred took her out for a spin. She would joke, It's a blast from the past that was built to last, just like our marriage. He painted it purple to match the purple heart he had received because both were important mementos from his past. Fred had apprenticed at a, as an auto mechanic after he graduated from high school. He had attended a few classes at San Francisco State during the draft, but he was two units shy from deferment and ended up being called to serve his country. He and Lucy were married one week before he left for boot camp. They were young, but they were in love, and nothing could stand in the way of that love, not even the uncertainties of war. Lucy had been on pins and needles after Fred left. She had worried that her soldier might not return home to her. She faithfully wrote letters 
every day and hoped that Fred would do the same. Since serving his country was his main focus, finding time to write letters every day was impossible. When he did find time to write love letters to Lucy, he tried to hide the human suffering he witnessed. But those letters were very few and far between. Sadly, when Fred returned home from the war, Lucy felt she hardly knew him. War had changed him. The experience was horrifying for most soldiers, but for Fred, it had a lasting effect. The deep-rooted scars almost ended their marriage. Suffering from PTSD, he became easily angered. Sometimes his flashbacks caused him to become isolated and dis distant, even when they were together. Conflicts made him irritable, and family disagreements often put him over the edge. Lucy remembered how hard it had been for Fred to sleep at night when he left, when he first returned home. He had had frequent nightmares. Often, he would, when he heard a plane flying overhead, he would become paralyzed with fear. If it wasn't for his love of surfing, he would have never been able to cope with his constant fear, anxiety, and guilt. His mind was totally clear when he was catching waves on a surfboard. When Lucy introduced her friend Judy to Bill, Fred's war buddy, she had hoped that double dating would bring Fred out of his shell. Every time they hung out with Judy and Bill, Fred loosened up. Sharing activities and conversation with another couple was therapeutic for both Fred and Lucy. Before that, his lack of desire in the bedroom had made Lucy feel rejected, and that brought about stress in their marriage. It seemed to her that he was just going through the motions when they were intimate. Once the two couples started double dating, Fred and Lucy began sleeping together more often, and although sex wasn't always part of the, their intimate exper experience, spooning and cuddling throughout the night was, and that strengthened their love for one another. Therapy and medication also played a big part in helping Fred cope with his PTSD symptoms. They never gave up trying to fix what war had damaged in their marriage. He battled PTSD every day of his life, even 50 years later. Time, unfortunately, didn't diminish Fred's haunting memories of the war. Fred was a hard worker. He often told Lucy that it would be a cold day in hell before he retired. He loved working with his hands and especially owning and operating the neighborhood gas station. He was a skilled mechanic and employed and trained many young, young backyard mechanics through the years. He still had a ponytail and a well-kept walrus mustache. He had a slight limp from a war injury, but nothing slowed him down. He was tall and lanky, and the blue eyes matched and his blue eyes matched the sky that lit up Lucy's world. These days, Fred frequently met up with Bob at Kelly Cove. They have reconnected and found equanimity. George's ashes have been scattered over the ocean, and to Fred and Bob, George's spirit surfs the waves with them. Back in the day, surfing had been their favorite sport. Like in the past, the two often bring their guitars along with them and sit on the beach strumming a few old Beach Boys tunes. Lucy and Fred had one son, Skip, who was close to his parents but established solid roots in New York City after medical school. Married with two children, he was an ER doctor and his wife, Marilyn, was a nurse. Their two sons, Cliff and Forrest, 18 months apart, were 9 and 11 years of age. Fred and Lucy tried, had tried to remain in frequent contact with their son and his family, but over the years, Skip's work schedule had become more erratic. His on-call hours had made it impossible for visits, so Lucy and Fred kept in touch mostly by phone and FaceTime. Skip and Marilyn were trying for another child, and this time they were hoping for a girl. Fred and Lucy were planning a quick trip to New York City to bring their two grandsons back to, with them to San Francisco. The boys were excited about their summer vacation and searching the internet for interesting places to visit in the Bay Area. While the boys were away, Skip and Marilyn would have alone time. This could prove to be a wonderful summer for all concerned. 
as far as the blessings of a new baby on the way, only time